So the stunt coordinator was going to fire the air ram. So it had a, a lead with the button going to him offset. When he does fire the button, I'm virtually in line with the ground. So he fires the air ram, which fires me straight onto the back of my neck. And literally, I'm lying on the floor and I can't feel my legs. And this went on for about two minutes. It's the worst feeling in the world. You know, I thought I was paralysed. I just could not feel my legs at all. I thought I'd broken my neck. I think I've been very fortunate to work on some of the biggest franchise, uh, from 007 Bond, Jason Bourne, Mission Impossible, Batman, obviously Star Wars. And when we were doing The Phantom Menace, I was originally called in as the fighter ranger to choreograph all the fights, which was my primary job. But when we started to look for a double for the Obi-Wan character, we were searching through the stunt register, and the only people we could, or were considered to be able to do the diversity of the job weren't available. You know, because it did involve a lot of acrobatics, obviously the fighting, there was a lot of fighting, a lot of weapon work with the lightsaber fighting. There was a lot of acrobatics, a lot of wire work. There was trampoline work, there was air rams, which are nitrogen systems that fire you up in the air. So it, it, in a nutshell, it came, everybody looked at me and said, well, why don't you do it? And then when we got in, obviously it was a lot of rehearsals, a lot of prep. We had to do a test fight for George Lucas. We went through a fight routine and um, yeah, he loved it. So I subsequently got the part from there. Can you talk about the uh, injury you almost, you almost sustained in Star Wars? There's a bit where Obi-Wan clashes lightsabers with Darth Maul, sort of backed up against the wall. And I remember Ray takes his hand off for the scene, or Darth Maul takes his hand off and uses the force to blast Obi-Wan backwards. So we were going to use an air ram for this, which is um, a nitrogen system, like a, like a car foot pump, uh, a huge version of a, a car foot pump, pump that fires you through the air. So the stunt coordinator was going to fire the air ram. So it had a, a lead with the button going to him offset. Three, two, one, lean backwards, okay, and he hasn't fired the button. And I'm continuing going backwards. When he does fire the button, I'm virtually in line with the ground. So he fires the air ram, which fires me straight onto the back of my neck. A, a, a lot of pressure, a lot of PSI was in this air ram. And literally, I'm lying on the floor and I can't feel my legs. And this went on for about two minutes. It's the worst feeling in the world. You know, I thought I was paralysed. I just could not feel my legs at all. thought I'd broken my neck. So the horror of it, all the medics are coming over and everything else. You know, no one knows what to do. It's one of those scenarios that, you know, you don't want to come across. Everybody's worrying. I knew I was going to hit the ground hard because I was landing on the floor and sliding. So I used two back pads. I had two motorcycle pads, one on top of the other. And I think because they're the heavy duty motorbike ones, they went right up to the top of my neck. And I think if I didn't have those pads on, my neck would have snapped without a doubt. And I hear obviously coming from sort of behind the camera, it's like, come on in, let's go. Got to do another take, let's get it done. I've worked with some very, very good physical actors that are very physical and very up for doing everything. Um, Tom Cruise is a prime example, very physical guy, a very capable guy. I think the difference between an actor and a professional stunt performer is everything the stunt performer does, he will rehearse, he will test, he will do. An actor will have everything tested so they can see everything done and then they will step into it. When I'm teaching a fight sequence to an actor, he will learn a series of moves, then he will learn the dance, which is the routine, then it's perfecting the dance. And perfecting the dance is the hard bit. That's taking you from learning a routine to becoming looking highly proficient. Uh, when I did Gladiator, uh, Whacking Phoenix and Russell Crowe, both of them hadn't picked a sword up before, and my job was to train them. I'd be Russell's side of the fight against Whacking all the time, and I would be Whacking's part of the fight against Russell all the time. We didn't actually get them together until four days before we were shooting the last fight, which is the uh, Emperor against Maximus fight. So four days before that, they had never fought together. And it was quite funny. I remember getting us to our training area. First time they come together, got Russell that side and Wackin that side. And they stand there. I go, OK, guys, take it really, really slowly. Walk it through slow motion and get used to each other. Wackin attacks, does the first couple of moves and suddenly stops and goes, oh, no, 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 no. Andreas' blade's a little bit higher there. I'm like, guys, guys, you're not fighting me. Get used to each other. It's about you two now. I'll introduce you to Freddy. Freddy's been with me a long time. Freddy is my fire mask. When we do a full burn, this is what we wear. He's made out of a special latex, which is fire retardant. He's got lenses, glass lenses, so obviously no flame can get to your eye. You've got a little hole where your mouth is. The nose is sealed. You want to hold your breath for the run of the, of the burn as long as you can. And when your adrenaline's going, um, something like 40 seconds seems like 10 minutes. I did a fire job on a big film. Myself and a colleague are both standing in a position where liquid fire is dropped on top of us. That's the effect. We'd rehearsed it all. Uh, gone through it all by numbers, what I was going to do, how I was going to move, what I was going to bump into, blah, blah, blah. When we stood there, the liquid fire that came down was so heavy, it was like being hit on the head with a sledgehammer. So it knocked myself and my colleague over. Now, the room was quite confined, 
and there was a lot more stuff in those tanks than we were led to believe because when the fire hit us it literally rolled up the walls and it was quite a confined area now when you're in the moment doing whatever you're doing i remember falling over i remember getting up I remember doing my bit now i'd finished my bit and i was starting to feel the, the heat starting to come through and nobody was putting me out and i remember and i remember lying to the side and i'm lying down right I've done my bit can you please put me out now and nobody put me out and this You've got to not panic. It's quite a mad situation where you've got to think, let's don't panic, let's be professional. Something's happening, they're going to come, they're going to come. All I can see is walls of orange. Remember, that, imagine the whole room is on fire, so I can just see walls of orange. I can't make out anything. And then I, then I heard sort of mayhem, a lot of voices shouting and screaming, and I managed to hear the words, Andreas, get up, Andreas, get up, move, move. So I immediately stood up. The guy putting me out, now he bumped into me, and I remember his arm got caught on fire. He's all in a fire protective suit, but I remember his arm got put on fire. Then there's a fireman behind him, so the fireman's putting him out. He's putting me out. To cut a long story short, for that, it was like there was too much uh, liquid fire above us in too much of a confined area, and I actually burnt the back of my leg, and actually I ended up having to take a slight breath, so I burnt the inside of my mouth. Luckily, not too bad. And when things go wrong, they can drastically go wrong very fast. I was doing a movie called Judge Dredd with Stallone, and I'm about 40 foot up, uh, and I come out of this, uh, come out of the window, I get thrown out the window by two characters playing two thugs. Special effects will put debts on the glass, okay? An electric debt, like little charges on the corners of the glass, uh, on an electric line, and they will basically fire it, and it cracks the glass, which splits the glass, which allows me to punch through it. If they don't do that, I'm hitting a solid piece of gra glass, and it is very, very heavy on you. Anyway, three, two, one, action pelted towards the glass, good energy, good speed, hit the glass, and it was like being hit in the face with a sledgehammer. The debts hadn't gone off. I punched through the glass, but it nearly knocked me out. Went into like a header position, which is like a dive where my body goes over so I can land on, the, on my back onto the box rig. I kept my eyes shut, and I remember opening my eyes and looking up, and my legs were hanging over the last box of the box rig, and two of my colleagues were there. If the debts had have gone off, I would have cleared the box rig and hit the concrete from 40 feet, so I wouldn't be here now. So they saved me in a way. But and ever since that day, from myself performing any type of high fall or anything from height falling into a rig, I will build the rig as big as you possibly can. So I was lucky that day. Nothing beats the adrenaline buzz of actually being the performer, performing a great principal stunt. If I stand up in any position and I hesitate in any way, shape or form, it's time to step back, hang up my pads and let someone else do it. I'm now 50 feet, 40 feet, 30 feet, 20 feet, all the time looking, checking, looking. And at 20 feet, I got onto the left hand wing, clambering over that door lip. And then I stood onto the wing and was able to stand on the wing momentarily. 